Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to another video with my Rivian R1T. A question we get asked a lot is, what is the range at maximum payload? When you load up the maximum capacity that the truck can handle, what is the efficiency? And if you go back a couple videos, or even maybe just yesterday's video, we ran this exact same loop unladen, which means no weight in the truck, totally empty, and uh, we got, I wanna say 2.15 miles per kilowatt hour at 70 miles an hour on the 22 inch sport wheels. Today, we're back again, same testing procedures, this time at maximum payload capacity. And we're gonna see how much less efficient it is to haul around all this weight. Let's talk about how we have the weight set up in here. Well, we've grabbed our new out of spec water tote. You can see it says sold to us. And um, water's an interesting one. And it's arguably not the best way to test for max payload because it's very much a dynamic load. It shifts around, it moves around. Thankfully, if it moves in one direction, it usually goes back the other to counteract the forces. I wish I had a static load to put in here but this is about as good as we can get. We have a water fill station right down the street from the office. And it, once we're going down the highway, it'll give us a really good idea. Another thing to consider here is our water tote sticks out just above the roof here. So there is a slight arrow penalty by having this in the back. I think that's okay because we're also gonna be running a similar test with the F-150 Lightning in another video. We're not comparing them because they actually have different payload capacities. So those are two individual videos. We're seeing how much payload affects this truck and then we're seeing how much max payload affects that truck. So stay tuned for that video coming up shortly. But um, what we're doing is we're charging the truck until it cups off at 85% state of charge. We did 70% last time, not that big of a deal. We were actually at a higher state of charge today, so I wanted to just let it normalize temperature, DC fast charging the way we normally do. As soon as it cuts off on 85% state of charge, we're gonna jump on the highway. We're going to have our automatic climate control set at 68 degrees. We're gonna be running 70 miles an hour in a loop style test from here in Wellington up to Cheyenne, back to here to counteract any wind and elevation. We do have a slight wind today, but I would say very similar conditions to when we ran this truck unladen and um, very curious to see how this does. Just to take you on a quick tour of the spec, if this is the first video you're watching, this is the large battery pack, but not the largest. It's the middle spec battery going in the Rivian. It's the only one that's in production today. It's about 130 kilowatt hours or so. I've been able to pull, I think, 125 out of it from full to dead. So really sizable battery pack capacity. We also have the 22 inch sport wheels, which should be less efficient, but I am targeting well over 300 miles, especially with cruising around town on these wheels. I'm really impressed with the efficiency. We also are gonna be running all purpose mode, which is the mode that I would expect most people to drive the truck in. When we do our range testing, our full charge range, I run the truck in conserve mode, which gives you a couple extra suspension options to lower it all the way down. It also physically disconnects the two rear motors, their permanent magnet motors. Um, and the reason they get disconnected is because you can't really shut off a permanent magnet motor. So you always have flux related losses and it basically runs front wheel drive. We're not doing that today because we didn't do it yesterday when we ran the baseline test. Baseline test was running standard suspension height at low speed, it, or at high speed, it dips down to low, excuse me, standard at, high, at low speed, low suspension at high speed. So it will drop a little bit on the highway and it's gonna be the same setting, same climate control, maybe eight to 10 degrees warmer today than it was yesterday, but I think it's about as close as uh, we can get. My predictions, just in case you're wondering, we've already done the test with a trailer of weight versus aero penalty, and I've shown that a completely unweighted trailer, unloaded, but with a massive aero drag, uh, creates a lot of drag on the truck and can slow you down. However, if you put a lot of weight on the trailer, but it, the wind's not hitting it the whole time, it's actually better for efficiency and range. My guess is we're not gonna see that much of a difference with this in the back of the truck. I'm gonna say we're gonna be probably in the high ones, 1.8, 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour, according to the car. Now, the thing is we can actually use all the in-car displays here because we're comparing yesterday's results with today's results and we're looking at the percentage of difference. I wanna know how much percent less efficient it is today with all max payload than it was yesterday, completely unladen. And well, with that crazy explanation, we'll let this thing complete at 85% state of charge. We'll jump in, hit the road, and do our loop style test. 
and give you the results along the way. I'd love to thank Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund for sponsoring today's video. They are giving away a Rivian R1T launch edition. Not this one, you can't have mine, but they actually already have theirs in their garage. So if you win the raffle, you could take delivery immediately of a Rivian R1T. Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund is doing a lot of work for sustainability and for cleaning up the US's climate. It's a really important fund and I encourage you to go down down to the link in the description below. It's a $200 entry fee. There's only 5,500 tickets available. It runs through the end of summer. Go in there and earn your chance to win a Rivian R1T. If you don't want a Rivian, by the way, you can get up to $130,000 in Tesla credits. So if you want a maxed out plaid, you can go for that too. So click the link in the description below to help a great cause and to earn your chance to win a Rivian R1T launch edition that's available right for immediate delivery. So we're charging up the Rivian right now. We're going up to 85%. As soon as it completes, that's when we'll head out on the loop. What I'm gonna do is go over here to the truck. We're going to reset trip A. This is sort of from yesterday's driving. So we'll reset trip A and then we'll do it. Uh, by the way, these are the specs on the truck for all of you nerdy Rivian people. If you're curious, there you go. Uh, what's funny is when I picked up the truck, it actually didn't show me the forest edge interior here. Now after a software update, it does. Very interesting. So um, we're at max payload plus this water. So we're actually slightly over um, by, you know, a half a pound or something like that. So truly maxed out here in the R1T. It's about as much as you can put in it. A little bit of a dynamic load, which is also a little bit of stress on it. Um, and then just sort of not a realistic temperature number. It's not 90 right now. That's just because we've been baking in the sun. So once we get going, we should be uh, normalizing out. Really curious to see how it does. Only 1% left until we're ready to hit the road. And there we go. 85% state of charge complete. I've just shut climate, I can't even talk, just shut climate control off so we can unplug and go. Oh, it's feeling nice outside. Perfect weather. Let's unplug this handle. We added 37 kilowatt hours, got everything nice and warm because the truck was kind of sitting around all day. We got water in the back. <laughs> this is just crazy. I'm so glad we got these water totes. They're awesome. Let's hit the road. So here's what we're gonna wanna do. We're gonna run a reset trip. We're gonna wait for total energy to go. Sometimes you gotta hit this a couple times. Give it some time. Come on, there we go. We're gonna go 68 degrees auto. We're then gonna go foot on the brake into reverse. And let's start on the loop. Same loop we did yesterday, unladen. We're going max payload, baby. Oh man, the fan's cranking. What's going on there? It's not even hot in here. And here we go, just about to merge onto the highway. As always, we're gonna target 70 miles an hour at the end of the off-ramp. The Rivian actually reads over what we're doing. Uh, so we're actually gonna be driving at 73 miles per hour indicated. It's pretty far off to, to match a 70 mile per hour GPS. So gentle accelerations onto the highway. As always, we're gonna try and hit 70 miles an hour at the end. And I think we got to get to 73, like I mentioned. So let's do it. It's so funny to feel the weight of the water in the back. You really do feel it. 73 miles an hour locked in. And uh, there we go. Uh, you can see it sloshing around. Let's hope that settles back there just slightly. We do have the ride in stiff just to control a little bit of the body motions a little bit better. But honestly, if this was a static load, and what I mean by that is if it was not a water load that's moving around, this thing would, you wouldn't even tell there's anything back there. I can't even feel there's anything back there right now at all. And um, man, it's just impressive, this Rivian, how much weight it can hold. Uh, and I should say how it handles the weight it can hold. It feels like max payload could be twice as much as what it is. I'm just so impressed with this truck. So cruising along here at 73, I guess we could use Driver Plus. So let's put that on. Boom, lane centering active. And uh, I'll update you throughout the drive if anything exciting happens. But from my position, this is just a normal, easy drive in the R1 t So just cruising down the highway, having a wonderful drive here in the Rivian. And the water's staying relatively calm. The only time is like if we get a gust of wind, I get this a little bit of jiggle effect just from the water catching up. But really not bad. I think having suspension and stiff helps quite a bit. And um, just cruising along, love the Rivian. I'll have some more videos about my ownership experience so far. I think I'm rolling up on 1500 miles in this truck and uh, couldn't be happier. I genuinely think this is the perfect daily driver for me and um, I'm genuinely thrilled with it. Just 
nothing but praise, really. A couple little bugs and issues here and there, uh, overheating air compressor, things like that, but I think these will be figured out with just revisions of hardware and software as time goes on, uh, but, but certainly nothing bad enough to ever deter me from buying another one, I would say, and if I had to do it all over again, I would do it. This is one hell of a vehicle. Anyway, let's continue up. We're about 30% of the way through our, our testing, and uh, I actually think the numbers are going to be really close to it unladen, but we won't know until we finish up. And we are approaching our exit seven, so I'm just gonna scooch over here into the right lane. We'll kick it off cruise control at the speed limit time, at the speed limit sign where we normally do. So boom, there we go. Let's coast in a little bit under regen, regen, regen. I'm really having a hard time talking today. What is going on? Too much filming, I think. Anyway, we're at my favorite intersection where as long as no cars are coming from the right, we can just zip on through. But with all this weight in the back, we're gonna take the corners pretty slowly here. I can feel the regen really working. So that's interesting. I really feel the weight under regen. I get more time with my foot off the accelerator pedal. And definitely a little bit different conditions from yesterday now thinking about it. The sun definitely much higher in the sky, putting a little bit more thermal load on the cabin. but. Really, we're trying to make it as apples to apples as we could from yesterday. So heading back out onto the highway, we're going to accelerate up to 70 miles an hour by the end of the on-ramp, as we always do, and uh, just absolutely enjoying the drive. You know, I could do this loop a million times in this truck, and I'd be just as happy as the first. This really is one pretty awesome vehicle. See you back in Wellington, Colorado, where we should finish the test. And we are just creeping up to our exit here in Wellington, a super, super easy drive all around. Just kicking it off cruise control there. Take a look at this, max regen, and it's still not slowing down nearly as much as it would, and that's where you really feel that extra payload. Uh, gotta say, Rivian handles it like a champ. Load leveling suspension uh, seems to balance the ride right out, which is great. So zero squat because it completely compensates. So let's get this thing over to the end of the loop and let's evaluate the numbers and see how much the payload affects the weight on the same loop that we did just yesterday. And here we are at the end of the loop. We've arrived at the charging station. Let's take a look. Also keep an eye out because we just did the same thing with the F-150 loaded up to its maximum payload. They're different, which is why we ran different videos and two miles per kilowatt hour. So that is a 0.15 mile per kilowatt hour difference, which is so minuscule. Let me get this thing back up and charging and we'll talk about why the numbers are the way they are. Well, welcome back to the charging station where we have completed our test and you've already seen two miles per kilowatt hour. That to me is shocking. It is so much less different than I thought we were going to see. Just for reference, yesterday, last night, and arguably even a little bit better temperature conditions, about 10 degrees cooler out, so it didn't have to work the AC as hard. This truck did 2.15 miles per kilowatt hour. Today, with maximum payload, including myself, right, because I count as that, going all the way up, we have 100 and, I don't know, 60 gallons, I'm forgetting the exact number, but plus or minus of water in here. This did two miles per kilowatt hour. That is roughly a 7% difference, but come over here and take a look at this too. There is an aero component here because you can see this sticks up above the roof, which should account for some penalty. I'm just thinking if this was down here in the bed, that may have been an extra one, two, or maybe even 3% in terms of uh, usage. So it comes back to what I've been saying about Rivian and towing. It's the same thing with Rivian and payload, or really any electric vehicle and payload. The weight doesn't matter. It's all about the aero. And I think this really proves it. You can load this thing up, close the tonneau. You can have it loaded up 
and just your, your range is not going to be impacted, probably measurably. You won't notice it. I don't think you'd feel a 5 to 7% difference in the real world. Um, that's very impressive to me. I'm just shocked at how well it did. And now we got to do some towing testing. So stay tuned because we have a number of videos coming up. We have new cars coming to the garage. We have new cars coming in for testing. And I'm going to leave you with a task. Put a comment in the description. What am I trying to say? Not in the description, in the comment box below. I've never asked anyone to comment for a YouTube video, I don't think. But do this. We also shot a video with this F-150 Lightning in the same conditions at max payload. It's a different payload than that, so it's not a comparable number. But what I am curious as to your thoughts are, what percentage did this lose? That lost 7%. Do you think this used more energy at max payload in terms of difference from unladen or less energy than the Rivian? Let us know what you think and let us know what percent loss you think this had at max payload. Anyway, thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video and we'll see you on the next one sometime soon. Bye-bye.